Hi, this is Brian Fogarty, and in this video we're going to do is look at how to perform and carry out individual and group predicted probabilities from a logit regression. This will be the same uh, code um, if you're using probit. Um, here we're just going to use logit just, just as an example. So as with the other videos, this follows from the previous ones. So in the, in the, in the most previous one, we, we looked at odds ratio interpretations. Here we're looking at individual group predicted probability. So we have our model here, which again is looking at employment, um, dummy as our outcome, and then gender and general health and marital dummy as our predictors. Okay, so to do individual predicted probabilities, um, which means that these are predicted probabilities for a specific type of individual or case or observation. Um, here we're using census data so we can talk about individuals, so people in particular, but again it could be for, for whatever you're looking at. Um, it just really depends on what, you know, what is your unit of analysis. So to do this, what we're going to do is we create a new data frame and then we're going to um, use that data frame and predict what the uh, probabilities are, the predicted probabilities are based on our model from above. So we're just going to create a, um, a new object. We can just call this new data. All right, very inventive here. So new data, and then we're going to use the data frame function. And so let's do this. So, so you can play around, you can do any combination really of the values. So we're going to do, uh, we're going to set gender equals one, so a woman, and then general health, which, which just, you know, the name of it's gen, general underscore health equals one. So this is someone in um, uh, very bad health. They're self-reporting this. And then we'll set the marital dummy equal to one. All right, and so that is people that are married. So this is going to be the predicted probabilities of being employed for a woman with very bad health who is married, or right, another way of saying that, a married woman who's in very bad health. All right, so we're going to create this new uh, data frame. Okay, so we can see right up here uh, what the type is. We have one observation from three variables. And then what we do is we use the predict function and we say, all right, model one, which is the model from up here, and then um, new data, because that's our, our new data that we're using. And then the type, what we want is response. So type equals, quote, response. All right, and then we're just going to highlight that and run that. All right, so what we get here is this is, so this is the predicted probability of being employed for a married woman in very bad health. So to interpret this, we would say um, for a married woman in very bad health, the predicted probability of being employed is 0.208, or we can change that to a percentage by just saying 20.8%. So if we wanted to do, for instance, let's say a, um, let's do a man. So this is a man in very good health who is not married. All right, so gender equals zero. General health, we're going to change that to five because that's the highest category. And then marital dummy, we'll just change that to zero. So we might want to change the name of our new data frame, but it's not a really big, big deal here. So let's just highlight this and run this. All right, so for a, um, a non-married man in very good health, the predicted probability of being employed is 0.884 or 88.4%. Okay, so again, you could do, you know, a whole bunch of different combinations of this. It really depends on um, the variables you have, what you're interested in. You know, one of the problems with this, uh, with doing individual predicted probabilities is that because it's so specific that if you're writing up a paper or something like that, you probably don't want to do this um, unless there's like a particular type of individual that, or you know, not individual or observation or, you know, some type of unit of analysis that you're really interested in um, figuring out what is the predicted probabilities. 
All right, so the next thing we're going to do is look at what I call group predictive probabilities. All right, so these are sort of um, predictive probabilities for the different values of a variable of interest. All right, so it's not a specific type of person, but just um, it's a more general version. All right, and so to do this, what we need to do is we need to have whatever variable of interest um, that we're looking at, we need to have it as a factor. And so we can check here, let's do it for gender. So let's check using the class function um, what the class of gender is. All right, so let's use class and then we did uh, data dollar sign gender. All right, so it's listing as integer. Um, for the regression, it doesn't really matter at this point, but what we want it to be is we want it to be a factor variable. So what we're going to do is force that using the as factor function. So we're going to we're going to uh, do data dollar sign, and then we need to call it a different thing. So let's call it gender underscore fact. All right, for factor. Okay, so what we're doing is creating a new um, variable within the data data frame. So then we do uh, as dot factor. And then our original variable, which is data, and then gender. Okay, so let's highlight that, make sure that works. All right, and we can check this just to you know double check to make sure it actually is a factor. So I'm going to do gender underscore fact. Okay, so let's highlight that, and it should say it's a factor. All right. So given that, what we have to do is actually rerun our uh, regression. Uh, with this new uh, type of variable. So the results are actually going to be the same, but we need this for doing the predictive probability. So what I'm going to do is just come up here and steal this, steal this code from above, and then come down here, and then I'm going to just call it a different uh, object here. I'm going to just call it model 2. All right, and then come into here, and then instead of gender, we have gender underscore fact. All right, then we just highlight that and run that. All right, so again, we're going to get the same results that we had from before. Okay. Okay, now that we have our new object here, we're going to create a new data frame. So this is a similar process that we did with above, with the, with the individual ones above. All right, so we're going to do new data. Again, you can call it a different thing if you're doing a sequence of these. So new data, and then we're going to use this with option here. All right. So th this kind of pastes on to what we're doing. So with data, which is our original data frame, all right, um, I'm going to do comma and then enter. And then we have, um, I'm going to use this data frame function. And then we specify how, how, how we're going to do this. So what we'll do is we're going to um, set general health and marital dunny at their means. Okay, um, now with the marital dummy, it is a dummy variable, so we probably shouldn't set it at the mean, but it's, it's for the purposes here, it's, it's not gonna matter that much, meaning you can set it to median or something like that. Um, all right, so what we'll do here is we're gonna do general health, all right, and then equals mean, and then general health, okay? And then um, because this is not gonna work if we have any type of missing values, what we'll do is we're set na remove equals true, okay? So that just says get rid of any of the uh, missing values. And then go, so we have three of these closed parentheses. So we're gonna go just outside that first one. All right, do a comma and then hit enter. And then we'll do it for marital dummy. Okay, we'll do the same thing. So mean marital dummy. All right, and then na remove equals true. Okay, um, so the marital dummy here is listed as an integer variable. So if it's a factor, you need to convert it to a numeric or an integer and then redo, rerun the regression. Um, and then do this, okay? So we're gonna go outside that first uh, close parenthesis and then do comma, and then we'll do our gender variable here. So gender underscore fact, 
And then what we'll do is we're actually going to use this factor option. So factor and then 0 colon 1. So that's saying 0 through 1. Uh, those are the only two values here. All right, and then we have the three closed. Okay, so let's just highlight this and run that and make sure that this works okay. All right, and so we can take a look at this, what this new data frame looks like. So we're gonna do new data, and let's just take a look here. All right, so we have that um, the new data frame has general health set at its mean, and marital dunny set at its mean, and then the two different values for gender fac. Okay, whoops. All right, the final bit here is we're going to use the predict function again. And so what we'll do is actually we'll create a new um, value here, so a new variable um, that we're just gonna call, for this purposes, employ PP for predictive probability. All right, and then we use the assignment operator and we use the predict function like we did above. So predict and then model two, right? Because that's the one with our gender fact. And then our data that we're using, new data. And then again, what we want is the type equals response. Okay. So we'll highlight that and run that. Okay, no errors. And then to take a look at it, we're just gonna do new data again. All right, so what this did, right, is we, it created a new variable here, or a new vector, if you will, that tells us what the predicted probabilities are. So what we can say is that when uh, general health and marital dummy are held at their means, the predicted probability of a man being employed is 0.83, sorry, 8.839, if we're rounding, so 83.9%. And then for a woman, it's 0.789, or we can round that to 0.79 or 79%. Okay, um, you know, you could do this, uh, another shortcut here, instead of redoing, asking for, for the data frame, if you just put a um, parenthesis around this, or wrap a, another parenthesis around this, this will give you that same information. All right. The problem is that it doesn't give you the full thing. It just gives us that one part. So it's nice to see it all together. All right. So that's it for this video. We just looked at how to do individual and group predictive probabilities within R from a logit regression. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.